Okay, now talking about the wrongful death of John Merrick. Okay, so he sees the painting of him laying down like a normal man. That's an idea. The idea killed him because he tried to mimic it. John Merrick did. He would sleep sitting up. He had to in order to breathe. He would not be able to breathe if he laid down normally because of his nasal passages. This could have been true. We don't know. This could be theory for the movie. It could be theory for the play and maybe even the book that was written. A lot of people maybe have seen the painting. That is intense, like literature laying down in a screenplay. That is something that's right up there with like movies like The Piano, movies that are just really high literature, if you know what I mean. If I, I don't know if I'm making sense, but movies that have a lot of thought behind them, powerful thought and, and like uh, meditation behind them. Because that's an interesting character study for sure. The movie. Now, I haven't seen the play. I, I've heard about the play. I, I've heard that you need a chiropractor in order to do the play. It's a, it's a physical challenge for the actor to play John Merrick. Here is Surrealism and Us. But this is a choice that was put into the movie. And you see the painting. And then he does lay down normally. And then he does die. So he follows the diagram of what would be natural. It, it's a statement about the artist, too. It's a statement about thought and idea and creativity. That's all in there because John Merrick did all that. He was, I think, a painter. I think, I think maybe he was a painter. He was a poet. He would write poems and read them. You know, he kind of talked like this. He breathed like this. And he talked to John Hurt, played him. And she said, yeah, I'm not an animal. I'm human being. You know, he, so he was, you know, affected by this, this great force that he had to carry around. This force of intense ugliness. And inside of it all, same thing Eugene, Eugene O'Neill did. He found the beauty. The writer did. And inside of it all, found the beauty of the ugliness. All right, so there probably are paintings, but to be actuality in the David Lynch movie, it's a sketching or it's a drawing of David Merrick, or I'm sorry, it's a, dr a drawing of John Merrick laying on a bed. It's actually a drawing of John Merrick. So another thing about John Hurt and the Elephant Man and David Lynch's masterpiece is you hear the breath of the actor. The <laughs> Lynch is the director for the actor, just like Shakespeare was as well and things. He does it for the actor. Yeah, he brings a lot to the set, but that the actors love that. And he's for the actor. So he is, he understands it far more than a lot of these sci-fi and all this, you know, all these directors that are putting down millions of dollars in effects and, you know, they bring all this stuff to the set that they forget about the actor. I think Lynch's stuff is uh, surrounding the actor, you know. Without the actor, it would not exist. He needs the actor, and so he has a relationship. One last thing about Elephant Man that I want to say, and then I won't say anything more for right now. It's a very important film, and I think I've said this before, it's a very important film analyzing relationship and relationships, right? With different types of people. It's a really good one about relationship. Another thing about Eraserhead, too, that's interesting is he was living on the campus of AFI, basically. <laughs> well, he was living on a set in a studio in a stables. So in the 70s, what it was real cool to do was to make a film on location. They didn't know he was there. They probably knew that there was like an experimental film being kind of done on, on offs, you know, like in the studios, but probably none of the filmmakers in AFI at that time American Film Institute even used a set 
They just show up to like a real place. They weren't building their own sets and stuff. Like stage manager or I mean uh, stage stage designers or uh, people that would design a set. He was doing that. He was living on the set that he was working with. So they just let it go for five years. They didn't really care. Oh, they, yeah, they made some kind of experimental films. Just don't go over there, you know. So they didn't really... People weren't trying to make like a sci-fi Star Wars movie off AFI. They didn't have the money to do that. The sets were pretty much useless. Or the studios is really what it was. They were stables. They were horse stables. So he was able to say that for five years because there were no real filmmakers that went through there. There were just filmmakers that would show up at some location or on the sidewalk and make this great this film that they would sit there and say great things about that nobody would really even watch and it was like a student film and they were like okay probably would have said the same thing about well they no they probably wouldn't have liked to raise their head they probably would have they probably would have uh, put it down because it wasn't like the like a real kind of it wasn't a taxi driver per se you know even though taxi driver is a good film but it wasn't it wasn't like it wasn't made like other films. It was it, it was made like more like old films, like on a set, and it was like there was costumes and there was long pauses and all this kind of stuff going on that no one else even dealt with. It was all original kind of stuff done. It was manufactured. One more thing about Eraserhead. Eraserhead did get the attention of other filmmakers. Even Kubrick shown Eraserhead to the cast of The Shining, Jack Nicholson and uh, Duvall. Um, and, and he, uh, Kubrick said, I want you guys to watch this. This is about fear because in the script, he talks about fear, overcoming certain fear. And he mentions fear. So he, you know, Kubrick was like, you know, this comes from California and he was already in England at the time making the shining. So he got a, he got a, a copy of it and showed it to Jack Nicholson and Shelley Duvall. Yeah. They watched it to, to, to try to understand fear. 8, 11, 4.1. delivery we're gonna head back and see Linda and Kitty Sunday, rejoice in the Lord always, Philippians 4, 4. Found your chapstick. Thank you. Thank you. 
Okay. Bye. Uh -huh. 